I'm sure all of you have heard about e-commerce and dropshipping before, and I'm sure you all see these people building million dollar brands and exiting and selling their brands for millions of dollars. And the truth is, building a multi-million dollar e-commerce brand is not as complicated as you might think. And really, you are only one winning product away to building a store to the point where it can replace or even double or triple your nine to five income. And you are definitely only one exit from completely changing your financial future forever. And over the last few years, there's been a whole bunch of e-commerce brands blow up. You have Kill Crew with Colty and Marco, you have Represent Clo with George Heaton. And the one thing that's in common with all these brands is they usually sell low ticket products, which are under a couple hundred dollars. And in my opinion, with the advancement of technology and AI, high ticket e-commerce and selling items for thousands of dollars online represents an absolutely incredible opportunity. And the reason for that is in the past, when you're selling things online, it's usually just like impulse purchases. But now with technology, let's say if I'm buying a fireplace, there's apps where I can scan a QR code and I can see what the fireplace will literally look like in my living room. As technology and AI advances, you'll be able to actually experience the product for yourself before actually making the buying decision. In the next three to five years, we're going to see more and more high ticket direct to consumer e-commerce brands explode that are selling items primarily over $1,000. I've personally built my own high ticket dropshipping store to over $6 million in sales in under two years. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you step by literal step how you can build a multi-million dollar or high ticket dropshipping store that you could eventually exit for a life-changing amount of money. Step number one is picking a product. So there's all sorts of things you can do to get product ideas. Number one is you can use ChatGPT. You could just type in, for example, tell me a list of high ticket dropshipping products that cost over $5,000. That's kind of the cheat code way to do it. What I would recommend is just when you're around living your day-to-day -day life, keep your eyes open. Like whether you're at the gym, you could see treadmills, workout equipment. If you're at the park, you could see benches, playground equipment. There's all sorts of these items that cost thousands and thousands of dollars all around you. So then once you get some ideas, what you want to do is you want to put them in Google Shopping. So you would want to type, for example, buy electric guitar online. And then what you want to do is when you scroll down to the bottom left, you'll see a section that says sellers. And you want to find a store that has the product type in the name. So if I was selling guitars, I would want to find a store that had guitar in the name. And then you want to take that store's URL and you want to plug it into a tool like Shop Hunter or like Qual Inspector. They'll give you a rough idea of how many sales that store is doing per month. So once we found some successful stores, the next thing we want to do before we move on to step two is we want to just check the overall trend. So if you go to Google Trends and you type in something like electric guitar or electric fireplace, you can see the overall trend over time. So if you look on a five-year time span in the market you're selling in, you would be able to see over time, is this a growing market? Is this a stable market? Or is this a declining market? So obviously we want to find markets with an increasing demand trend over time, which means the market is growing. So we will be able to play as we start our store, a bigger presence in this growing market. And if we have these two things, number one, a product that we can sell for over a few thousand dollars. Number two, has lots of demand and ideas is even increasing over time. That is going to be an excellent product idea. And once we have that, we're ready to move on to step two, which is finding suppliers. And finding suppliers is very, very simple. If we're doing electric fireplaces, we would go to Google Shopping and we would type in buy electric fireplace online. And then what you wanna do is you wanna go to the same stores you found before. So any store that has electric fireplaces in the store name. And then on their website, you wanna find a section that says brands. You wanna make a Google spreadsheet and you wanna put all these brands inside the spreadsheet. And you wanna do this for all the electric fireplaces stores you can find. So you have a complete full list of all the electric fireplace suppliers. So then once we've picked a winning product, once we have winning suppliers, step number three is building our website. And guys, there's tools now like with Shopify, they have fill in the blank website templates that you can literally build a respectable, nice looking website within a couple of hours. And if you want to do it even faster, there's tools like Replo. They have a collection of all the best Shopify brands on their website, and they will allow you to mirror multi-million dollar brands in seconds. Another thing you can do is when you have this list of suppliers from step two, when you reach out and start closing them. So let's say I closed Modern Flames. They've agreed to work with me. They're going to let me sell their stuff on my website. Then what I could do is I could go to a existing website like Electric Fireplaces Depot that currently has Modern Flames on their store. And what I can do is I can just put Electric Fireplaces Depot, but I can copy and paste that URL and I can put it into the tool like Shopify Scraper and it will allow me to export their whole product list onto my store. Pictures, descriptions, everything will be literally copied to my store in the snap of the fingers. All you have to do is you still have to go to ChatGPT and change the words around so you're not gonna get caught plagiarizing and get your site taken down. And the biggest thing when you're launching your store is you wanna go for speed over perfection. So you could hypothetically spend months and months making the perfect website, but there's going to be nobody going to it because you haven't moved on to the next step, which is ads. So I recommend when you're launching, just focus on speed. So once you actually start closing suppliers, it shouldn't take you much more than a week max to actually go live with your store. Once you have visitors going on your site, you use tools like Lucky Orange, where you can actually see how people are interacting with your website. And you can make optimizations and changes that take into account how they're acting. So for example, if you see someone clicking, trying to view product images, but the image won't blow up so they can scroll, then you would want to make that feature available on your store. There's also 
all sorts of insights you can gain just by watching how people interact. Number four, now we want to start to run ads. So when we're selling high ticket items that cost thousands and thousands of dollars, it's very important that we target bottle of funnel people. When you're selling something online, you can imagine everybody in a funnel. Let's say if you're selling grills, someone at the top of the funnel would be searching for the term grill. They don't know what brand they want. They don't know exactly what grill they want. They just know they want a grill. Someone here would be searching for an alfresco grill. Alfresco is a specific brand of grill. So the person not only knows they want a grill, they know they want an alfresco grill. And then at the very bottom of the funnel, you would have people searching for alfresco 32 inch grill in black. So not only do they know they want a grill, they know they want an alfresco grill. They know they want a 32 inch alfresco grill that's black. So the person at the bottom of the funnel is most ready to buy compared to everybody else. They've already largely made up their mind for exactly what they want. So if we had partnered with alfresco to sell their grills, we would want to target this person at the bottom of the funnel because they're most ready to buy. And that's going to be our most profitable type of customer. Now, it's not always going to be branded search terms. For example, if someone was searching a term like high end 32 inch grill in black for sale, that is still a very high buying intent term that we would want to target at the bottom. And when you're advertising on platforms like Facebook and TikTok, you're targeting audiences. So you're saying like, I want to target 18 to 50 year olds who live in this place who have this interest. Now, the advantage of Google and Bing is their search engines. So we can actually target people searching for specific search terms. And that is a huge advantage when we're selling these products that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, paid ads is not the only way that you can sell products. Let's say if I'm selling massage chairs, what I would probably do, I would go on Apollo and I would find all the gyms in the US and I would download all the decision makers emails from people who work at those gyms, like CEOs, founders, marketing directors. Then what I would do is I would send them offers. Hey, want to boost your monthly membership price by 25%? Consider adding massage chairs to your gym. And then ideally over time you build case studies so you can send these offers on email, but you can also call them. So like, let's say if you're targeting gyms in Chicago and you find a gym that does have massage chairs, what you can do is you can figure out how much that gym who has massage chairs charges per month. So let's say they charge $59 per month for their gym. What you would want to do is you would want to find another gym in Chicago who doesn't have massage chairs and they're probably going to charge less. So let's say if they're charging $29 per month, you could then call them and say, hey, your competitor over here is charging $59 per month because they have these other services for their customers. I'll make you a one-time offer that we will come set up a massage chair in your gym. And if you don't see an increase in memberships or you're not able to increase your membership price at a stable membership growth rate, you can return the chair and we'll refund you in full. And most likely when gyms can start offering different services to their customers, then more people are going to want to go there because they'll have more stuff they can use in their marketing materials. Or lastly, you can find Facebook groups. So you could go on a gym owner's Facebook group and then you could say, has anyone used like massage chairs to increase their membership price or any other complimentary services that you guys have used to boost your membership rate or boost how much you could charge? And then they might say something like massage chairs to you, but they might say something else like, oh yeah, we added this red light therapy or we added a sauna or any other ideas that these other gym owners have used to increase what they can charge per month. And then you can then offer those products to them. People don't buy products, they buy results. So if a gym owner is buying a massage chair, they're not buying a massage chair, they're buying the ability to increase their membership price. So then you have to ask, what result can I deliver my dream customer? And then you have to solve that result for them with your product and with your offer. So instead of just saying, hey, do you want a massage chair? It's like, hey, do you want to increase your membership rate by $20 per month by using this massage chair? Then once you have that, it's very easy to find your target customer and make them a good offer because you're very, very clear about exactly who they are and what they need. And step number five is scaling. All you need to do to scale is do more of what's already working. So if you're running paid ads, you can scale two ways. Vertically, which essentially means scaling your ad spend, spending more money on the same products so you can make more sales with the same products that are already working. Or you can scale horizontally, which means broadening your product selection. It could be bringing on new massage chair brands. It could be bringing on new products. So instead of just massage chairs, maybe you start selling massage beds. So in both situations, your advertising spend is going up. In one situation, you're spending more on the same products. In the other situation, you're spending more across numerous products. On the scaling side of things on hold outreach, you just have to do more of what's working. So let's say for every 2000 emails you send, you get two people to buy your massage chair. So all you have to do to scale 10X is send 20,000 emails. And there's a book called Predictable Revenue that's literally about this, that oftentimes the only thing to scaling is doing more of what's already working. Obviously your business is gonna get more complex because maybe you're gonna have to have more people to make the calls, you're gonna have more people to manage. But ultimately, if you know for certain that every thousand emails you send or every thousand phone calls you make, you're gonna make two sales. If you keep everything the same and the quality of the customer you're reaching out to is the same and there's thousands of gyms in the US, then logically, speaking, the result should be 10x if you simply do 10 times more of what already got you there. Let's say your goal is to exit and sell your store for a million dollars. Most e-commerce stores sell at a 4x multiple per year. So that means if you wanted to sell your store for a million dollars, you would have to be doing 250,000 take-home profit per year. $250,000 profit per year is about $25,000 profit per month. So guys, if you're selling products where you can make $1,000 profit per sale, you only need to sell two products every three days. If you can sell two products every three days for $1,000 profit. That means over the 20 out of the 30 days in a month, you're selling one for $1,000 profit.
profit. So that ends up being 20,000 per month. If you're doing 20,000 per month, you're doing 240,000 per year. And you can sell that store for roughly a million dollars. But we all know the truth. Most people watching this video are probably just gonna watch this, flick to the next video and never actually take action on this. But for those of you who are listening, who are the action takers? For those of you who do wanna make a change, me and my team have helped over 150 people make their first thousand dollars online. So if you're interested in working directly with me and my team on building your first ever e-commerce store, I'll put the link below in this video that you can book a call to speak directly with us. Thank you for watching this video. If you took any value from it, I would greatly appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers.